the problem with donor occupation is as follows. In the 1990s, and actually earlier in the 80s, uh, Ralph Nader used to talk about uh, Washington as corporate-occupied territory. And his argument was, you walk up and down the halls, and everybody is on on somebody's payroll. In other words, you're receiving lobbyist money to to make decisions that are favorable to this or that corporation or industry. Now that still goes on, but today we have something that's a little different, insofar as we have what I call oligarchs, billionaires, people with huge quantities of money who are in a position to dramatically shape policy making. Right now, the focus in policymaking has been war in Ukraine, open borders, and war in the Middle East. Why are we so committed at this stage to an offensive war that Israel wants to wage with virtually the entire region? Remember, this all began uh, ostensibly on the basis of the 7 October attack. Well, the 7 October attack has uh, been debunked in many respects in that all of the, not all, but most of the horrific atrocities associated with decapitating babies or baking babies in ovens and mass rapes and murders and so forth, many of that, many of those assertions have turned out to be false. We know that. And then suddenly, instead of uh, this vengeance campaign designed to permanently disabuse Hamas of the wisdom of ever trying something like this again, it becomes a scorched earth policy of mass murder and expulsion. In other words, we're, we're now going to wipe out Gaza. And after Gaza, we're going after the West Bank. And oh, by the way, we're going after Hezbollah. And then you have uh, weeks later, Netanyahu saying, well, now's the time for us to settle accounts with everybody. And we discover that he has the United States Armed Forces effectively under control of Israeli national military power. And that the American people haven't been consulted on any of this. They're simply saying, oh, yeah, sure, we should support Israel and help Israel defend itself. Yeah, but this has very little to do with defending Israel. This has a lot to do with militarily establishing Jewish supremacy in the Middle East. Do we really want to sign on for a war that pits Israel against everyone in the region? So why is this the case? Well, how much money is involved? Who's getting the money? Now, we already know that dozens and dozens and dozens of members of Congress show up and they may be worth 150 to four or 500,000, occasionally a million, and they all leave as multimillionaires. Where does all of this money come from? Who is bankrolling it? Who is pushing it? And, and that's what you've got to go back and look at the not just the industries and the corporate groups, whether it's, you know, an organization like Raytheon or Lockheed Martin that obviously profits enormously when large numbers of missiles and rockets and so forth are, are utilized. That's one piece of it. Who else? Who wants this? And what is this thing called the American-Israeli Political Action Committee that has billion, billions of dollars ostensibly in its at its beck and call. And that's money is not coming from Israel. That comes from within the United States. That's why APAC, the Israeli lobby, as we call it, is not a foreign lobby. Its money originates inside the United States. Who is behind APAC? Who is contributing this money? And how does this money drive the United States into what looks like a regional war, beginning with a major attack on a foreign country without any debate, without any vote, without any discussion. Hmm. Why? We've got to go back to donor occupation. Who are the donors? Where's the money coming from? And how much money are we talking about that each congressman or a member of the Senate ultimately benefits from?